Um, David, I wanted to start first of just the, who's, I guess, out tonight. You have a, you know, a couple of extra defense, and then you have a spare forward. Yeah. So. Uh, Nicky's out, Ty's out, and Banker's out. What was the kind of the decision-making process with, you know, all those guys? Yeah, just, you know, we feel this is our best lineup. You said the first one was Kinesio? Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. Uh, what does Kevin have to do to sort of reestablish himself as an everyday type guy? It didn't help that he missed, you know, about 10 days. So he got a little bit behind the eight ball there. But he and I had a good conversation today. So he knows what he needs to do, which is continue to, you know, play a little bit higher pace, a little bit more edge, a little bit more well-rounded game. Uh, yeah, like you mentioned the time off. How costly was that? Board? Yeah, it didn't help him for sure, you know, so. He's probably playing a little bit of catch up here, so. Without, with so many additions this year to that forward group, is it just going to be a struggle for Kevin Beatty just to be, you know, kind of be what he was, I guess? No, I don't think so. I think he's got the ability to, you know, solidify himself in our group and, you know, do what he does best. But he's just a little bit uh, behind right now. Is the speed and physicality kind of, on that fourth line, I guess, with Giovanni Smith kind of playing tonight? Do you feel like that could be a big impact for tonight, that fourth line, just the speed and physicality against Vegas? Yeah, I mean, all those guys bring a little bit of an edge to him. And I really like Zetterlund's camp. He's played at a great pace. He's had an edge to him physically. And Sturm he brings to the table what he always has. So, you know, that line is uh, a line that we're going to count on to spend time in the offensive zone and make life hard on our, on our opponent. What are you looking for from a guy like Thomas Portolo tonight? Obviously, opening night, big moment. He likes to play, you know, his two biggest moments seem to be against Vegas in his short time in the NHL. Yeah, yeah I mean, this is going to be a little different. You know, he and I talked this morning about the fact that he's played late season games, and it's a lot different when the season starts. So he's going to see big boy hockey tonight. And, you know, a couple of things he and I talked about today were, you know, what can happen to a guy who has been such a skilled player and been such an effective player his whole career. You're asking them to change their game, and that doesn't mean you're trying to take away anything from their game. You want them to be the player they are, but you're trying to add to their game, and that's the message we sent them this morning. Like, no one's trying to change you as a player. We're just trying to, the game is going to demand you to be a more well-rounded player like it is every skilled young player. I mean, and skating and checking are non-negotiable at this level. I mean, if you're going to be a successful player, uh, with that type of skill and that size, you've got to skate consistently, and you've got to make sure you're physical in the way you can be effective physically. I'm not asking him to go into a corner and plaster Peter Angel the, the boards and win that battle over and over again. But at that size, there are certain ways to be physical. You know, you got to have anticipation. you got to have a good stick, play through people's hands, and beat them off walls. That's being physical, right? Whereas if you're 6'4", 220, you're physical in a different manner. Right, so and that's a couple of things we talked about this morning. One thing I was uh, asked Kopp about this is kind of, and this can go for the whole team as well, is obviously there's been a lot of excitement. It's just kind of a big moment, training champs coming in, first game of the season. How do you guys feel like you guys can settle down and get yourselves in, engaged in the game? Because, you know, being over-amped is, I would say, a thing. Yeah, we're, we're excited because, as I've touched on, you know, this is really the first time where we've kind of prepared to play a game. All the exhibition games, We've had hard practices the day before. We've had longer pregame skates. You know, it hasn't been a normal preparation for a game, whereas, you know, these last four days of practice, with the end game has been the game, you know, where it wasn't the case during the exhibition season. You know, you're more concerned about conditioning and getting some systems in and establishing an identity in the way you want to play. And not that you don't want to win the exhibition games, but that's not more important than you know creating your identity and getting in great shape. Besides the obvious a win, what do you want to see from your guys tonight? I want to see an honest effort physically and mentally. And one of the things that we need to do night in and night out is earn respect. And you know, one of two things happen every time you show up here and you go on the rink. You're either going to earn a little respect, or you're going to lose a little respect. And for us, it's about gaining respect. And when you play with that intentions and you play with the right intentions, you usually gain respect. Uh, not to be the bearer of bad news, but your first eight games of the season, uh, seven of them are, of course, against playoff teams. Three of them were. Didn't notice. By, <laughs> 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 the reason why, I, of course, uh, of course, I know you've been asked about this, but um, it actually uh, might be, and I've only looked 
about 15 years so far, but right now it's the hardest Sharks start to the season <laughs> I've seen so far. And just what is your reaction to that and sort of the gauntlet that you guys have to face? Yeah, I mean, the schedule is what it is. I mean, you can you got to play these teams eventually. Sure. And, you know, if you're sitting here worried about who you're playing and you wish you had a different schedule, you're already behind the eight ball. So, you know, to me, if I'm a player, what better way to start the season than play at home against the defending Stanley Cup champion? That's why you play this game. And if you're hiding from these types of challenges, then we got the wrong people here. What do you thought of your paddling kill so far in the preseason? I don't know if it was a big, another main group was only together really for that one game, but how do you feel about your, your group of penalty killers right now? Yeah, we feel good about them. You know, they've done good things, and, you know, our, we've been fortunate here over the last, even before we got here, where our penalty kill's been one of the tops in the league, and we certainly plan on having another great penalty kill. Missing a lot of guys were yeah. part of that big penalty kill right. last year, and obviously Logan's out of that yeah. now too. Yeah. Um, and with the start of the season, sometimes the officials like to sort of set the uh, baseline right. for what's going to get called this year. I mean, yeah. Do you expect a lot of calls tonight, and do you think your PK have to sort of respond to that? Yeah, I haven't thought about that. I mean, there might be, and you know, to me, when we get a penalty, we got to be ready to kill it. And but you know, if you're playing. Yeah. Smart, disciplined hockey, you know, you're staying out of the box. So that's all we can control. Play smart, disciplined hockey and stay out of the box. Don't give referees reason to call penalties.